This is the craziest laptop that I've ever tested. I've tested a few gaming laptops in the past, but the Acer Predator Triton 900, it's pretty crazy. Now before anyone starts typing, this is Mac Rumors, why are we talking about a Windows laptop? Well, for one, I find this laptop to be incredibly interesting, and this laptop also has a unique display feature that I haven't really seen before in a device that's like this. Side note, stick around for a render of what a MacBook version of this machine might look like. Before we get started, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to get notifications whenever we share a video. So for those of you who are not familiar with the world of gaming laptops, well, they're generally very, very large and pretty over the top. Acer spared absolutely no expense in either one of these categories. This thing is absolutely massive. It says that it weighs nine pounds on the spec sheet, but I just, I find that incredibly hard to believe. I honestly think this thing is like 25 pounds. It's so heavy. And uh, maybe I'm just used to lightweight MacBooks, but this thing feels like a ton, a ton of bricks, like lots of them. It obviously is mega bulky. And for those of you who are used to sleek and minimal laptops, you might find this thing kind of ugly, but I honestly really like the design. This is what gaming laptops are. And a lot of the ones that we have tested kind of look like this, but I think this guy actually screams more unique, interesting, and definitely premium, judging by how well this machine is built. There are loads of various ports on three different sides of this laptop. The right side has a lock, power button, Thunderbolt 3, and a regular USB-C port, a USB type A port, ethernet, and then on the back of the machine is your charging port and display slash HDMI ports. And then on the left hand side, there is some more USB type A ports, a microphone and 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. And oh, by the way, there's also a secret USB port that sort of tucks away. So if you have a wireless gaming mouse that requires a dongle, you can plug it in and hide it right inside the laptop. One quick side note before we open up the laptop and see what the rest of it looks like, this machine requires a massive power brick for charging. It makes sense, I guess, considering that this is the overall theme of the laptop, big, but I still really couldn't fathom just how large this power supply actually is. So once you open up the laptop, you will see a 17 inch 4K LCD panel that has a refresh rate of 60 Hertz, which I'm sure is gonna make some gamers out there pretty upset, but it really is a beautiful 4K display. The colors are very vibrant and the text is very crisp. It's a really nice display to use and game on. The star of the show and the unique feature that I was talking about with the display is this hinge on the side here, uh, which can allow for the display to be adjusted in a few different positions. Now I've seen convertible laptops in the past. That's not a new concept, but this reminds me of the Microsoft Surface Studio but in a gaming laptop form. Even though this is a really cool design, it really does beg the question, why would anyone need this? For me, I like the flexibility to be able to bring the screen closer to me while I'm gaming. Say I don't know how to game very well with the keyboard, which is actually a true story. And I decided to use the forbidden Xbox controller. Um, in which case I can just sit here at my desk, bring the screen super close, have my Xbox controller or whatever, and I can have a more immersive experience as the screen's a lot closer to me. And I, I really like that flexibility. And I can also just flip this screen all the way around and now you can see what I'm doing. And oh yeah, it's also a touch screen. So if I bring this down, I could in theory interact with this machine as I would a tablet, which there's no way anyone's ever going to pick this up and use this as a tablet because that would look absurd, but it is an option if you want. And since it's a touchscreen, I keep coming back to this idea of the Surface Studio comparison and thought, man, this would be a perfect laptop for graphic or game designers or people who just want to work and play hard all in one machine. But the downside to this display, even though it is a touchscreen, you cannot use a stylus or something like the Surface Pen, which I've tried and it just does not work. This was a bit of a bummer, but Acer has a concept machine out there that's basically the same laptop, but able to take advantage of a stylus for designing and creating. It's also incredibly color accurate, something that this machine is definitely not. 
Either way, this hinge display experience has been really enjoyable and I find it to be incredibly unique. And so that is most of the reason why I wanted to make this video. And then I also wanted to make the comparison of what it might look like if Apple did something like this, which I immediately was greeted with the notion that this would never happen because Apple will most likely never make a touchscreen laptop. But if they do, here is a render from our graphics wizard, Ryan. He came up with this awesome idea and concept and I think it looks really cool. And I don't know, maybe let me know in the comment section down below if you would want something like this in a MacBook Pro that has touchscreen capabilities and the ability to adjust the display like this. You know, it could be fun. Speaking of fun, there are loads of other fun things to point out about this laptop. For one, there's this weird glass area above the heat pipe and the fans, giving it that custom PC build look so that you can see inside of your computer like you would with a custom PC. Is that pointless? In my opinion, yes it is. Is it cool? Absolutely. There are some custom buttons above the keyboard, which we will get into in just a second. And then there's this keyboard. You might've noticed by now that it's an RGB keyboard and typing on it has been pretty good. Uh, it's fun to type on because it has low profile mechanical keys. But at first I was a little bit iffy about it. And then it kind of grows on you the more you use it. Uh, the trackpad is weird. It's off to the right, which shouldn't be weird because we use a mouse on the side of your, if you're right-handed, you would use it in that spot. But for me, a trackpad being there is incredibly weird. And I also don't like the right and left mouse click buttons. Um, it's just, I don't know, it's weird. Uh, you could tap to click if you want, but uh, the buttons are not the best. And I can't imagine it would be easy to game with either. So you're definitely gonna want to have an external mouse. However, the trackpad does turn into a cool touchpad for the number keys if you double tap the icon in the top right corner. Going back to the keyboard, even though I do like the keyboard and the typing experience, there's really no room to rest your wrist or your hands on this laptop. So you'll definitely need some sort of like pad to prop your hands and wrists up and make it a bit more comfortable. The crazy keyboard lights, custom buttons that I talked about earlier, and even the fans can all be controlled using the Predator Sense application. The application gives you a bunch of options and settings to tweak for RGB lighting, overclock settings and management, hotkey customization, fan speed settings, CPU and GPU monitoring, and more. There are so many quirks and custom features and settings that you can mess around with for this machine that I really didn't have time to cover everything, but I'll try to give you some more information about this machine in sort of a rapid fire segment. So, specs. This thing is loaded, as you can see by the specs on the screen. These beefy internals translate perfectly in terms of real world performance, as you can pretty much guarantee getting 4K gaming at at least 60 frames per second. I don't game much, but during testing, performance was never an issue whatsoever. There are plenty of other reviews on this machine that goes into much more detail about performance, but trust me, this thing performs just fine. You will not be disappointed. What is disappointing are the speakers, which is shocking because with a laptop this size, you would think that they could fit some pretty robust speakers inside but unfortunately they really didn't. They're not bad, they're just not great. Overall, this laptop is a gaming beast. It's extremely unique with this design and I keep coming back to that cool Microsoft Surface Studio comparison because that's just what it reminds me of, but in a laptop form. And even though you'll most likely never travel or use this as an actual laptop, you could technically bring this with you wherever you go. It's not gonna be very portable compared to other machines out there, but it's definitely portable, and you'll have a powerful gaming machine with you at all times. This particular configuration comes in at around $36 to $3,700, which is extremely pricey, but it might be worth it depending on your needs and how you would use this machine. So I would love to know your thoughts on the Acer Predator, the Acer, Triton Predator? I would love to know your thoughts on this laptop in the comment section down below, and also what you thought of our cool MacBook version concept in the comments as well. This has been Dan with Mac Rumors. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you around in the next video.